Pastor Amara Burrell Williams, the wife of Pastor Kevin Williams Jr. of Greater Five Way Temple in Albion, Michigan. Just want to invite everyone to uh, listen in to our YouTube videos, um, the sermons and Bible studies of our beloved pastor, um, and invite you out to Greater Five Way Temple of Albion. It's 402 um, Austin Avenue in Albion, Michigan. And visit our website. The link is below in the description. We come at this time to give you the gospel once again. Uh, especially if our members that's not here, we definitely encourage you to give. Uh, you can do so at your home and those that want to be a blessing to this ministry. You can give your cash out. Um, and by the blessings of God, um, because I know a lot of preachers I've been seeing on Facebook being blessed through the pandemic. <laughs> trying to finagle the brains of the saints, but it actually happened uh, to me and my wife. Uh, so we're going to try to pay this church off. We're going to hold a mortgage burning service prayerfully by the center. Hopefully people won't be scared to come to church by then. Amen? Amen. As our youngest man look like he got his first haircut. <laughs> Amen. You look a little bit lighter. <laughs> but yes, we encourage you to give you give through our cash app, dollar sign GDWT Albion all capital letters. Once again, you can give to our cash app, dollar sign GDWT Albion all capital letters. Uh, I just thank God for what he's doing with this ministry, and I'm telling you. When people get over their fear of coming to church, this church is going to be packed. Amen. And then we're going to line up and we march somewhere to our new building. Uh, or they can knock this building down and we can rebuild it how we want it. Amen. Amen. But anyway, go. God will pour out the Spirit upon all flesh because that's His word. And we're going to be ready when that happens. If you turn to your Bibles, please turn with me to St. John chapter 16. St. John chapter 16, today we enter rest in verses 31 through 33. You said John 16? Yes, somebody please help Sister Nancy as this is her last Sunday with us. She's moving. Praying for her. Amen. Uh, man, she's been an extremely faithful member. Okay. I, got a, I got a big members, have my secretary, call people, text people, do drive-bys, get people drinks, Mountain Dew, and candy bars just to come to church. Sister Nancy walks. She don't even want to get in your car. She will walk when it's sunny. She will walk when it's cold, she walks through the rain, and she walks in the snow. That's being faithful. The Bible even says you will be judged upon your faith. Amen. And she got some serious faith. Amen. Amen. But in the book of St. John, as we make sure all of our cell phones are so silent or vibrate, St. John chapter 16, verse 31, the Bible reads, Jesus. Answer them, and it's in red. So, who said it? Jesus. Do ye now believe? Did it take this coronavirus pandemic for you to force you to believe? Yes. Did it take the knee of the officer shouting of George Floyd, seeing that over and over again for you to believe? Oh my God. Breonna Taylor. The police running up in the wrong house, shooting her dead in her bed after she worked 12 hours. Did that take you to believe? Or Mar Aubrey, who actually graduated uh, high uh, standards, top of his class, had a bachelor and master's degree, 
jogging in his, in his neighborhood, living in a house many of us can't afford, so the police thought he wasn't supposed to be there, and the police shot him. Does that take you to believe? Or what about a brother fell asleep in Wendy's Park a lot? Because he might, he might have ate too many uh, double cheeseburgers. And he fell asleep. You can't believe everything the media says. The media says he's intoxicated. But how we saw that report? Is that on the autopsy? And because he's running away because it seems like police officers is killing us, he gets killed. Does that take you to believe? Verse 32. Behold, and it's in red, so who's speaking? Jesus. It ain't me. The hour cometh. Yea, it's now come. That ye shall be scattered. Every man to his own. And shall leave me alone. Don't that sound like a lot of empty churches to you? And yet I am not alone. Because the Father is with me. And what's God's name? Jesus. Verse 33. These things I have spoken unto you. That in me ye may have peace. In the world ye have peace shall have tribulation. Be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Happy Father, we come to you today. We just give your name, thanks, and praise. We thank you, God, for another day in the land of the living. We thank you, God, for waking us up today. We may not be what we want to be, but the fact that we're still here in the land of the living, that's better than those that's not. We praise and worship your name right now, even through the pandemic. We're praying right now this pandemic and this coronavirus, whether it's political or medical, that it ceases to exist across the land. We're praying right now against injustice, that we may be able to come to and fro from our home, to and from work, to and from church, to and from the grocery store, yes. without fear of our lives. Yes. We're praying that this word helps somebody right now in the name of Jesus, that they may uplift them, that they may encourage them, that they may strengthen them, and that my flesh may be submissive, that he may use me as a ready vessel to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. We pray that as this in Jesus' name. Jesus. Amen. You can be seated in the house of God on today. Today's sermon topic is overcome with Jesus. Amen. Overcome with Jesus. I got a little echo, Mr. Crump. Overcome with Jesus. The writer of this gospel is Apostle John. When also we know that he wrote the epistles and he wrote Revelation. When you look at the book of Revelation, Revelation is playing out right before our eyes. Everything that they said that was going to happen is happening. So it's strange for the church. I'm not dealing for those that, that wasn't going to church before the pandemic. Because we all got the family members. They figured we come on Mother's Day. We come on Christmas. We come on Easter. That'll get them in. I'm not referring to those uh, secular saints. I'm referring to the church that what the governments, because our government never abolished the state of Michigan, the attendance of church. The church was exempt. But I never saw so many church saved, baptized, Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost, so excited not to go to church in my entire life. I mean, you even have people, and some are still posting, don't go to church. My question to them is how quick you want to go to hell? My God. All right, all right, all right. If the abortion clinic, and have you ever been into a rich community is a nice word I can say, because I won't be so nice because next Sunday, one of our sisters won't be here. 
But have you ever saw a parent planhood in those type of communities? No, they're only in urban communities. The abortion clinic was open. The dispensaries, yeah, we have states that like to smoke, we can get out. All type of names, blueberry kush, yes. all type of stuff. So the dispensaries are open during the pandemic, never closed. Then we have those saints that like to do communion at their own house or behind the wheel. Mm -hmm. Well, they're going to get Hennessy. They're going to get VSOP, Alize. Huh? Praise the Lord. Amen. And if you broke, you get the Mad Dog 2020. The liquor stores were open during the pandemic. The grocery stores. That's when I, one of my good friends, said he should have started a church in Walmart because all the saints was there. And he said the majority of the saints he saw didn't have a mask on either. So my question is, if you can attend all these secular, progressive, destructive, demonic, because we know many of our saints ain't buying no organic food in no grocery store. Uh -huh. If you can attend these places, why you can't come to church? Amen. All right. If you can wear a mask and go into Walmart, Kroger, Buyers, some people wear gloves, why you can't wear a mask in the church? My God. Amen. It's hard for the pastor to be effective when his responsibility is to perfect it of the saints. Mm -hmm. That's the whole reason of the call, is to help you get to heaven. I can't do that when you got me on the split screen, when you got 2K over here, <laughs> and you got Pastor Williams over here, and you going back and forth on your smart TV. The devil <clears throat> have used the pandemic to scare the saints. For some reason, the state of Michigan, and I know Texas, Arizona, Oklahoma, Florida, are going through tough times. But my thing is, what, what did you think was going to happen when you increased the availability of the test? And these new tests, I want to get this out here, because maybe I get with Sister Kate on my other platform, because I don't like to preach politics in the pulpit. That's a no-no. But what they're saying, this new test, is to see if you ever had it. So if you listen carefully to both CNN and Fox News, they're saying these majority of these people that gather are what? Asymptomatic. Which means, guess what? They're not dead. But the meat is using these numbers that's increasingly inf inflated. You had two governors that I know for sure. One is Republican, one is Democrat. They both said the numbers from their state was increase, increasingly fabricated. Both. So my thing is, how can we as a church, we follow the news more than we follow the Bible? And we wonder why we still stuck in the same places that we're stuck in. Now, yes, the churches that are extremely large have to take different measures. But they told me one of the supposedly on fire churches in Detroit, not only was he not teaching and preaching from a safe place, he completely closed down his church. He's done. How can we get to this point? And he's a full bishop, by the way. Not the BMW, but of the apostolic faith. How can we get to this place? Well, according to the scriptures and according to what Jesus was saying, when Apostle John was given this, we should never come to this place. Should we use wisdom? Yes. Because the book of Proverbs does exist. But to completely dismantle the gospel of Jesus Christ, yeah. we in trouble. 
And you know what the crazy part is? John told us this about 1900 years ago. And we still, as a church, is moving in ignorance. So people ask me, I had to talk to Minister Land concerning my blessings when he was cutting my hair. <laughs> people ask me, Pastor Williams, in the pandemic, how could you get a brand new car? During the pandemic, we couldn't celebrate my wife's birthday how I planned to. We was going to go to Flemings in the morning. We couldn't get in the restaurant, but she can get a brand new car. Amen. Amen. All right. Amen. And then the funds began to rain upon me. As, my, as I opened up the envelope, and my wife was on the phone with the sister, and I told her, she was like, you got another check? Because God's favor is not there. I don't care if it's just me, my wife, or my daughter. I'm going to preach this gospel. Yes, sir. I don't care if it's the coronavirus or the HIV virus. None of them is going to stop me from doing God's work. Yes. What people don't know, they look at me and they see a, a young man they say, wow, looks like that you have yourself together. But you don't know that I'm an overcomer myself. Where my family came from. We was in, we did the funeral of my cousin, Sean Bailey Jr. And we was in the hood. That's where I'm from. I'm one of the people in the statistics that overcame my area. I had a lot of help from my mother, a righteous, holy woman, her prayers, a lot of work physically from my dad. My mama worked herself to the grave, and my dad almost worked herself to the same place to make sure that their children would not be in that place from where they came from. Overcomers is with Jesus Christ. Not the nation of Islam. Not Farrakhan. Who through the pandemic has been very quiet. Isn't that strange? Most of our television evangelists, pastors, mega, 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 mega churches have been extremely quiet. But it's been little storefront. We're not a storefront. We see about 120 here on the record, including our balcony. But the little bitty churches is the ones that's coming out, pouring against the tricks of the enemy. We have to become overcomers. Apostle John was not a deity. Now, it doesn't go into detail about the apostles, their relationships, whether they was married. Because a lot of people say they weren't married. That means I ain't supposed to be married. Well, if you're going to take that choice, stay out of the strip club. Because that's not a holy place to unite. But Apostle John had a job. And what I've been teaching and we're going to have another one probably before the year's over about budgeting, financing, and empowering yourself. It's hard for a pastor to continue to ask for tithes and offering off the backs of the church, but you won't help them increase their financial wealth, which is also a tool that the enemy uses against the church. Because if you don't have the correct finances to run a ministry, your church will collapse. We must have forgot that Solomon wrote in his journal, which is in the book of Ecclesiastes, money solving all things. Not something that we read in these books about wealth. This is in the Bible. But Apostle John had a job. And he had a job that he collected enough fish, he done. He's able to go evangelize and support Jesus Christ. And then after Jesus went on, he was able to stand in a place 
where he wasn't tied down yeah. to a job where he couldn't do God's work. My God. Apostle John was close to Jesus. He was so close to Jesus, he sat by Jesus on the Last Supper. Was that an accident? Jesus don't make accidents. Amen. There's no such thing. Jesus also referred to John as a disciple whom he loved. Now I'm sure Jesus loved a lot of them, of everybody. And he loved all the disciples, even Judas, who set him up. But he specifically went out his way and is recorded in the text of the Bible that he loved John. So Apostle John had a special part in his life, in his heart. And if I had to consume or put together the whole book or the Gospel according to St. John, and I had to use one word to describe it, I would describe it as life. You see, this Gospel is different from the other three. The other three depicted Jesus Christ from his birth until his earthly death, until his resurrection, into his ascension. Apostle John dealt with the miracles, the signs, the messages. So it's different. Focus on the salvation. That's what Mark, Matthew, and Luke didn't focus on. It. That makes it different. If we look at the definition of overcome, it's to succeed in dealing with a problem or difficulty. Defeat an opponent and or to prevail. Basically victory. How many of y'all feel like overcoming right now? Yes, Jesus. Whatever that you're facing. We have to know who we are. And we have to know what power that we can attain and dip into. The Bible even says in the book of Acts chapter 1 verse 8, he shall receive power yes. after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Now it's not documented in the Bible, but I'm trying to figure out, is that power to overcome injustice in America? Yes. Is that power to overcome this coronavirus? Yes. I think so. Yes. I think John was trying to push the fact that with Jesus, all things are possible. Amen. With Jesus, he provides positive change. We all should be striving to have more Jesus in our life. Yes, sir. Whether it be to increase our prayer life, whether it be to increase the amount of the Bible we read, whether it is to attend church, as many churches are opened up, many spiritual leaders are beginning to see that this coronavirus is not just a pandemic, it's becoming a political debate. Where people are actually playing with the lives of those in the United States of America. We worry about our medical conditions. They're worried about their presidential nominee. But I come against all that foolishness, yes, all that nonsense. Yes. It doesn't matter who's in office. But for me and my family, yes. we will worship the Lord. Yes. For me and my house, yes. which is greater by the way simple, about the shepherd's place, yes. we will worship God. Yes. We won't let government officials tell us when we can praise God and when we can't praise God. We will stand against the fiery walls of the devil. Because if the weed man and his shop is open, God's house and God's plan is open. If I can go and kill and murder an unborn baby in a black or brown woman's belly, I can go and worship God. Yes. If I can go to the liquor store and get me a fifth or a pack of Tennessee or VSOP or for the hip hop sites, 
Go get me some piece of rock. And I can do that. And the Bible says the wages of sin is death. Keep drinking that alcohol. And why so see your kidney fall onto the body? Yes. I come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly.
God has given us. That's why the Bible calls the Holy Ghost a gift because it allows us to pull from the powerful force of Jesus Christ. See, when Jesus Christ descended into heaven, he wanted to leave himself here and all of us that we may obtain that same power that we saw in the book of Acts or the book of the Acts of the Apostles where there was laying hands on the sick and the sick be healed. They was committing many miracles in Jesus' name. And I know that we're living in the end times. But I can't tell you, especially early on, how much peace that I've had. And the Bible even says he will be peace in the middle of a storm. That's why when the disciples was on the boat with Jesus, the storm, a great storm came about. And the disciples start panicking. Oh, what are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? And guess who was sleeping? Jesus. Because you have to be that very thing that you tell everybody to be. A good leader. So I can't tell you I'll be peace in the middle of a storm if I'm too empathic myself. Come on, put your hand. 